the cabinets are special because there's no other place in the lower 48 that has that concentration of ice climbs. Everything from big, fat, blue ice flows, really hard one pitch mixed climbs and complex 2,500 foot alpine climbs. I had no clue that Montana held such gems. The first time I saw these ice climbs, it was unreal. The potential for new discovery up there is endless. Every time I've gone up there, we've discovered some new route or some new area. It's remote. I feel like it's really rewarding. Uh, and uh, just with these icy walls, it just reminded me of the Mad Max movie, like some place that you might do combat, you know? And I don't know, the name kind of stuck, and now everybody calls it the Thunderdome. Climbing in the cabinet has been somewhat my life coming full circle from being a young man looking up and just longing to climb there to having the skills and, and the friends to put up world-class ice routes. My name's Scott Coldiron, I'm 52 years old, and I was born in Missoula, Montana. We grew up very poor. My mom raised three kids on her own. We were on welfare and homeless for a year and a half or so, so we didn't have a lot. I guess I remember childhood as being a pretty scary thing. I was afraid of people and just wanted to fit in and never did. But Missoula was a beautiful place and we spent a lot of time outside. We had access to the river and to, you know, lots of little wooded areas and went hiking a lot. That part of it was pretty good. When I was in my teens, I started working in the woods on a tree planting crew and did a lot of work in the foothills of the Cabinet Mountains around Libby, Montana. Tree planting is really extremely dirty, difficult work. And I just remember being all tired and stopping for a minute to look at these peaks. Like you could just see these, these big white ridge lines and north faces of the cabinets. And, and I was just really drawn to that. To a poor kid from Missoula, Alpine climbing seemed pretty out of reach, like something maybe East Coasters do, uh, like lacrosse or sailing. When I was 19, I was just kind of lacking direction and didn't know what to do. And I joined the Army, served in the first Gulf War. The first time I felt a real sense of community was actually in the army. You're fighting for the guy next to you. It's the closest family you'll ever have. My unit was destroying munitions dumps and there were some, some nerve gas munitions and we were exposed to sarin and cyclosarin. I went from being really gung-ho soldier to seeing the horrors of war and well, basically that turned me into a pacifist. I didn't like what I saw and I remain a pacifist today. After the Gulf War, the only job I could find was at the loading docks in LA, loading semi trucks. One day I woke up to have you know, not being able to move my hands and they were painful and swollen. First I thought, you know, maybe it's a pretty hard job. Maybe that was normal and it would go away. And after a week I went into the doctor, they did a muscle biopsy and found extensive nerve damage. I got a autoimmune disorder called eosinophilic fasciitis. The army attributed it to exposure to sarin and cyclosarin nerve gases. It started attacking all of my joints and well, everywhere there's a 
tendon or a ligament, I guess. At that point, I gave up on my dreams of climbing those snowy peaks in the cabinets. Life became really painful for me for about five years. I couldn't work. I spent most of my day just enduring pain. I was told that I would be in a wheelchair within the year and, and that I would die of the disease they thought I had. I remember back then, I thought that I would probably like die on the street, like I didn't have any family support or anything and everything was getting worse. So I bounced back and forth through the VA healthcare system, seeing one doctor after another until I lost count of how many doctors I had been to. I kind of left Western medicine totally and found a naturopath. His plan was from what I remember that I eat leaves and soup for about a year <laughs> and uh, somehow it worked. I fought the disease for five years. Then when I started the naturopathic treatments, it was another couple years of, of recovery. I think that gave me a real desire to live my life really fully and experience everything I could experience and not take everything for granted. As soon as I was well enough to get out, I started pushing into the mountains and started climbing. After hearing rumors of ice in the Cabinet Mountains, I was drawn back there. I started looking on uh, Google Earth and Topo Maps, and I mean, you could see Blackwell Glacier, which sits between Snowshoe Peak and A Peak and catches all the runoff from both of those. Apparently, nobody had been in there in the winter, and we were like, oh my God, this is it. We found the jackpot. I finally got in with three of my friends and we showed up at the base of A Peak. About four o'clock in the morning, we traversed over, found a really nice couloir, climbed to the summit. It was just a great feeling of accomplishment, a great day out with friends. And from the top, I just remember looking down and seeing the, the green foothills of the cabinets and telling the guys like, you know, it was 30 years ago, I planted thousands of those trees. It was a really meaningful moment to me. And then there was a period where I was really having a hard time finding partners. There were all these really obvious 1,500 foot ice routes that nobody had climbed and I couldn't find partners to go do them. It was really when I started climbing with Brian and soon after that, Matt, that we really started sending all the big routes. I was coming out of a failing relationship and I was just really at a loss for what to do to make myself feel better. And Scott called and he knew I was having a hard time. Said I should come into the, come into Montana with him, go into these cabinets. And we shoved into the mountains for a week and it changed my life. So the first route that I sent in the cabinets was the third route that I'd ever led in my life. And then yeah, third pitch ice I lead, first ascent. Really amazing experience for me. We called it Cheeto. It's on the lower wall, right off the lake. I met Conrad Anker. He introduced me to Matt Cornell, and that was the first trip that really blew things up in the cabinets. I jumped at the fact that these were all on climbed ice rounds. I was blown away. It was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. I mean, how many times do you have the chance to go climb unclimbed waterfalls over a thousand feet in backcountry in Montana?
kind of showed the real potential of the area and people started to get a little more psyched. We started climbing the big routes on the Thunderdome that I'd been wanting to get for years. Scott had a little base camp set up. So he brought in a wood burning stove and had this huge base camp tent and cots, sleeping bags, two burner stove. It was plush. WI4 M6, like 1200 feet, that Scott and I put up called War Machine. After all the big lines had been climbed on the Thunderdome, I thought, man, it's time to go back up and climb that, the devil's ass crack, Kular. My buddy, Jess Roskelly, was just coming back from a trip. We had a good weather window. It turned out to be the most beautiful and difficult climb I had ever done. It was uh, 2,500 feet tall, and we called it Canmore Wedding Party. Jess was one of my closest friends, and that was the last route we did together. The following April, I uh, died in a climbing accident in the Canadian Rockies. After that, the climbing became much more about the peoples and the friendships, and I just started trying to get as many people as I could back there to experience the the incredible climbing and put up more first ascents. My name is Marlon Thorman. I'm a firefighter in the city of Spokane. Every time we come in here, we always put up something new, a first ascent. It's almost like a mini expedition in a sense. Last week I had been up here and spotted a new pillar, probably 600 foot up the face. Oh, from the trailhead, we must be about seven miles. About to climb a new line. It looks skinny and hard. We are up on the Thunderdome. This is uh, kind of right before the steep pillar of Road Warrior. And we are looking at the ice to the left. It's kind of a, a dagger that was just touching down. Was able to protect part of it by pounding a couple of pitons in the rock wall yeah, behind it. Pulls out now. <laughs> and he doesn't have to put any ice screws in. If there's 20 or 30 feet or so until he gets up to where it's fat. We were a little bit worried about, you know, whether it might be climbable or whether it was strong enough, but it turned out to be great ice and was really steep, but yet climbed just amazing. Was able to get one good screw in high on the pitch and finish it up. Oh, that was amazing, man. I think that was the most fun I've had on any first ascent pitch I've ever done. Like, that was sweet. Lots of exposure, you know, a little bit of mixed and rock and ice and kind of puts the whole package together. Yeah, Hard we went back around and found this cave and it turned out to be this subterranean ice climbing. Uh, 
It's one of the most unique pitches I've ever climbed, I think, and one of the one of the prettiest. The climbing activity in the cabins is just starting to pick up. More people are starting to head out that way to explore. Yes. <laughs> I'm Sinitensio. This is my first trip to the cabinets. This is actually my first year ice climbing. The route we put up yesterday, we ended up naming the Devil's Brownies. I'm Trisha Thorman, and I'm from Spokane, Washington. Just looking at all the various routes and knowing that there's more than I can even oh climb God, in one trip is just really cool. Oh the best part of climbing the cabinets is the hang. <laughs> go out and try really hard and then come back and have a really nice warm tent to hang out with and kind of build a sense of backcountry community. You, you suffer together, shivering on the side of the mountain and the bond is formed. I guess it's kind of coming full circle from being here as a young kid and working a really kind of shit job, just longing to be up in those mountains and not knowing what it took to get there. 35 years later, I'm up here and I have the skills and I'm able to find challenge and adventure kind of in my backyard and seeing a lot of people get their first ascent of a big route or made new friends on the walls of the Thunderdome. It's really been about the people and the good times and, and the climbing's been also pretty damn amazing, I guess.